Hi everyone, my name is Jess from Stellar Tarot and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video style that I haven't done <clears throat> in quite some time and that is uh, witchy book reviews. Specifically, I'm going to review two books today. The first is The Green Witch, Your Complete Guide to the Natural Magic of Herbs, Flowers, Essential Oils and More by Erin Murphy Hissock. Hiscock? Hissock? I don't know. And then The Celtic Lore and Spellcraft of the Dark Goddess, Invoking the Morrigan by Stephanie Woodfield. Um, Celtic Lore and Spellcraft is published by Llewellyn and uh, The Green Witch is published by Adams Media. Uh, the reason that I haven't done witchy book reviews for a while is that I started a free book club on, my, uh, on, on Facebook. It's called Stellar Tarot's Book Club if you would like to join. And you're welcome to come read with us. We read uh, usually a book a month and it's almost always a witchy tarot or like psychology, well-being, personal growth type of book. And at the end of the month, I do a live video chat with the people in the group and we talk about it. Uh, it's not obligatory to participate. You are certainly welcome to participate only with the books that uh, we choose to read. And the books are chosen by uh, members, including myself, making suggestions and then voting on the suggested books and then setting a timeline for them uh, to, you know, for the next uh, couple, three months ahead. So that way you have plenty of opportunity to order your copy of the book that you choose and uh, be able to read along with us. So in doing that, I have often in my favorites videos at the end of the months, I have talked about the books that I have read for book club and if I liked it or not. And I've usually done that just so that people kind of know some of my thoughts. So I've kind of rolled a favorites video into a book review video or, or I, I guess technically roll the fav a book review video into the favorites um, and I'm going to stop doing that. I'm only going to talk about the books that I've read that were absolutely my favorites if I really really enjoyed them. If they were only kind of so-so I'm not going to talk about them in favorites videos. I will, however, if I feel like it's relevant, review them in a separate video. So I apologize to those of you who maybe have been missing these videos and really feeling like you're feeling a little bit left out as far as the witchy books are concerned. However, if you would like to join the book club, the link is always in the description box below. All you have to do is request an ad. I have, um, kept it a closed group. That way we don't have random bot people joining. And also it helps to um, keep the content within our group private. So that way, if any of you guys are still in the broom closet, uh, no one's gonna be seeing your content come up on your uh, feed that you are commenting or liking posts within that group. So that will help to keep your privacy as well. So I think without any further ado, we're just going to get straight into the book reviews. So the first one, as I said, is The Green Witch. And I was really excited about this book. It looked so pretty, it looked so cute, and it looked like it would be a really great um, companion to have as far as practices for green witchy people were concerned. And it is. It is a good little book um, as far as green witchcraft is concerned. However, I do have a bone to pick with the part in the title that says, Your Complete Guide. I really wish people would stop using the word complete in a title because I really feel like it is difficult to discern whether or not you've actually managed to capture everything to do with that particular path in that book. And she hasn't. This is not complete. This is a fantastic beginner guide, pardon me, to green witchcraft. This is fantastic if you have never ever walked the path of a green witch before, you know it really appeals to you, or like if you've done other things in Wicca and stuff like that, but you haven't um, 
maybe done too much ritual, you haven't worked too much with herbs, other things like that. This is a fantastic guide. A better title would have been The Green Witch, A Beginner's Guide to, and then the rest of the title. That one change in, in the title would have really made this, I think, um, a really easy and quick recommendation. Um, because it says complete, I am going to pick apart why it's not complete. So one of the first chapters is um, just about what a green witch is, uh, what they aren't, what some of your own, uh, what some of the differences are between other paths. The second chapter focuses on your own powers, so focusing on things like your energy centers, health and happiness, what your uh, go-to tools might be. Um, and uh, it does not say anywhere in there that your own mind and your own um, uh, your own ability to do things like uh, meditate and get into a meditative state, uh, you know, things like that are important. Um, it talks about purifying your space and using the elements inside, embracing your own power, making a sacred outdoor space, which isn't possible for everyone. Chapter three focuses on tuning with nature, which is fantastic. Um, and there are a lot of really good exercises for grounding yourself, vision, smells, sixth sense, that's fantastic. But I think that that part of it should have been mentioned um, in the second chapter as well, and then maybe said that it would be discussed further in the third. Um, and then it goes into things like the seasons, uh, living with other, uh, like attuning to other things like the moon, the sun, star and zodiac energy. Um, and then it starts to go into some different woods, which primarily looks like it is just uh, the druid woods. There is um, birch, oak, maple, pine, cedar, rowan, poplar, ash, willow, witch hazel, honeysuckle, apple, elder, yew, hawthorn, and hazel. Um, you know, you've, you've uh, eliminated a lot of trees which are native to the United States, which is a huge um, epicenter for, you know, green witches as well, and a lot of other types of trees. So this is why I think it's not complete. Um, it just, it isn't. It isn't complete. Uh, there's then information about a lot of flowers, but again, these are very popular, like garden flowers, and then some popular kitchen herbs like rosemary, sage, nutmeg, things like that. Uh, there's some very basic information on different crystals and stones. This is by no means a complete account of different crystals and stones. I think they've left out quite a few common ones that could have been very useful. Um, there is a really good amount of information about uh, witchy gardening and then uh, some green witch magic and um, making things like incense and spell bags, making a broom, other things like that. Becoming a natural healer. Basically, the becoming a natural healer part is nothing but a bunch of teas. And that's obviously skipping over... No, I'm not answering that. Um, it's basically just like a bunch of teas, some baths, and some stone elixirs. What about other healing modalities? What about uh, meditations or crystal healing or um, energy healing, Reiki, things like that? Um, it, it just, yeah, it's it, it leaves a lot of stuff to be desired. Uh, the last couple of sections are on kitchen recipes, which there seems to be some pretty good ones here, and then an appendix with uh, basically all of the different herbs, stones, trees, and things like that um, that were discussed in the book, talked about, um, and just 
some keywords on uh, what their correspondences are. Uh, there is a bibliography in the back, which is decent, um, and then an index so that you can find all the pages listed with that particular subject on it. So let's pick about let's pick apart the pros. As I mentioned, I think this is a really fantastic beginner book. It gives you a lot of really good basic information and it gives you a really good jumping off point if you are just beginning on the green witch path. Some of the cons to be aware of, um, it can be disappointingly vague in some aspects. Uh, as I've said, it can leave a lot of subjects with very little of it discussed and can leave a lot to be desired. Um, it does not talk at all about things like the Wiccan reads and whether or not a green witch path falls in line with Wicca or whether it is a path of its own and uh, different deities that can be worked with uh, for people who are interested in uh, working with personified deity within their green witch path um, is not discussed at all and I feel like if you're not touching on that even a little bit you're probably doing some of it a disservice I also think that if you're going to mention nothing but the Druidic sacred trees, then maybe you should also um, at least honor some of the other types of trees that are really common and uh, popular, I guess, um, in other major continents of the world. And that's not really discussed at all. It seems like it would be much more complete if you were living in the UK or in um, a lot of places of like Western and Northern Europe. It's just, it's not very, it's not very inclusive and it's not very broad. Um, another pro is that uh, everything, all the information within it is easy to find. So if you are somebody who dislikes one of those really complicated books where everything is kind of all over the place and it's difficult to navigate, this book is laid out very well. Um, it is very easy to find everything. The index is very good. The appendix is very good. Um, if you've read it and then you're wanting to do some spell work later and you just need to get a couple of keywords uh, for the correspondences of some of the items that you learned about in that book, it's very easy to go into that appendix and find what each thing mentioned in that book is good for. So I do really think it's helpful for beginners. Um, another con is there's no pictures. Like there's none, there's, there's no illustrations, there's no photographs, there's no, um, there's nothing in it that makes it a tactile or a more um, well-rounded experience. Um, the, the cover is beautiful. It's definitely a, um, like a, a fabric of some kind or like a nice paper. The, the cover is absolutely beautiful. The inside, even just these, these cover pages are just a nice soft green. It looks so beautiful. Um, the beginnings of chapters have this really nice cursive writing with these little decorative details. And the different sections of the book are separated so that you can find them easily from the outside of the book with these darker, you know, kind of brownish, grayish black, um, and then this nice cursive writing again. So when you're looking at the book from the side, it can, might be hard to tell on camera, but there are definite dark lines along the sides of the pages so that you can easily separate out which section is which. Um, but as I said, I think it's a misnomer to call it complete, and um, I think that if you are a more intermediate or advanced person in the craft, um, specifically in green witchcraft, you can easily give this book a pass. You probably already have much better and more informative books out there. Beginner, I would call this a beginner book. I would give it like a four and a half out of five. If you're looking for something on the intermediate um, to advanced scale, I'm going to give it like a two and a half to three out of five um, because it's just not what the title claims that it is. 
So that being said, let's move along to the next book, The Celtic Lore and Spellcraft, Invoking the Morrigan uh, by Stephanie Woodfield. Let me start off by saying this is a fucking tome. This book is huge, it is heavy, and it isn't the cheapest book. Um, Actually, it's not too bad. On the back, it suggests $19.95 US and $22.95 Canadian. I can't remember how much I paid for it. I got this off of Amazon, I believe. Um, by the way, the Green Witchcraft book was suggested uh, $16.99 US and $22.99 Canadian. Interesting. Oh, well. Um, this is a tome. This, this is a beast. This is not light reading. <laughs> this is the book or a really good book to pick up if you are interested in learning a lot. And I mean a lot about the Morrigan. If this is a goddess that you have found yourself um, really wanting to uh, get up close and personal with and really learn a lot about her then this is the book for you, or one of the very good books for you. This book is separated into four parts. Part one is Who is the Morrigan? And it predominantly um, talks a bit about the Celtic people and then the Morrigan in her mythology. Part two is called The Three Morrigans, and um, it talks about the three, what we can tell from what has been written down the three aspects of the Morrigan, which almost certainly are the three aspects that we can safely say were probably the main ones associated with the Morrigan as a triple goddess, and that is Maka, Bev, and Anu. Uh, part three is the different faces of the Morrigan, and that is things like her as a shapeshifter, a fairy queen, the earth mother, phantom queen, a lover, things like that. Um, and part four is Ancient Goddess and Modern Worship, which is probably the coolest section of this book. It is um, all about different things that you can do to um, honor her, the altars that you can set up, uh, offerings that you can do, patron deities that you can work with her alongside of her that complement her energies really well, seasonal and moon rites to have to do with the Morrigan. This book is very complete, I feel. Like there is not a lot about her that this book doesn't talk about. For the most part, Woodfield is very good at using documentation, uh, primary sources, and the information that we do have that's left over from uh, the Celts that uh, Christian monks wrote down. Um, but she does give some personal gnosis as well, which I think is very helpful. Because unlike, say, Greco-Roman mythology, which there's a lot of surviving artifacts from and, uh, you know, primary resources of how these gods and goddesses were celebrated, Celtic mythology and Celtic um, deities are harder to get really acquainted with, because with the exception of goddesses like, say, Brigid, um, because it was mostly an oral tradition, when Romans conquered the, um, the Celts, a lot of the mythology was lost because the Druids and uh, the Celts just didn't write much of their information about their culture down. A lot of what they did has been lost or is only guessed at. So I feel personally that having some personal gnosis in a book like this, which is so based in fact and, um, you know, is almost academic in some ways, this book is fantastic for making sure that you get a really well-rounded idea of the Morrigan both from a documented and historical context, as well as from a personal uh, perspective of somebody who has worked with her the most. And she doesn't just stop, by the way, at Maka Anu and Bave. Um, she does have an additional chapter in that uh, section about the different aspects of the Morrigan, which is called um, The Trinity and Additional Connections. And this literally is what it sounds like. This is 
um, talking about the Morgan as a triple goddess, but it is also about dissecting the other possible faces of the Morrigan, like Nemen, uh, Anya, Danu, and other goddesses like that. She even gives spells, incenses, waters, oils, rites, rituals, prayers, incantations, and other things like that for the lesser known or lesser associated possible guises of the Morrigan. Uh, this book is not heavy on illustrations either. It is almost entirely um, vocabulary and words. There are some sections uh, on things like the Oum, which is really helpful. And uh, there are some nice little, um, let me see if I can find it here. There's some nice little separate pages where she does um, like prayers or incantations and stuff. And it's really quite beautiful. They, they do like nice borders and things like that. I just saw a page a minute ago and now I'm good. Oh, there we go. Um, so like you have these nice pages with um, a poem or an incantation or something separated out by this really lovely Celtic border. Um, as you change to the different uh, ch um, sections, you get these really nice, beautiful individual individual like title pages um, with some Celtic knotwork on it and some nice quotes. This is... If you work with the Morgan, I really feel like this is a must-have for your bookshelf for um, using it either verbatim to do some of your rites and spell work with her or to use it as inspiration and a jumping off point to write your own. Especially if you feel creatively challenged, if you're not the type of person who can easily sit down and write a really gorgeous poem just like that. If you need... Um, if you need some inspiration in order to write some of your own stuff first, uh, this book is definitely going to give you that. Hands down, I am giving this book a 5 out of 5. Whether or not you are a beginner or you are an intermediate when it comes to working with the Morrigan, you are going to learn something by reading this book. The poetry and the recipes for the different oils and incenses and waters and all those kinds of things are fantastic to have on hand especially if you are not well versed in correspondences for different herbs and oils if you just want a recipe that you can throw together because you know it'll work that's the book for you um i do obviously feel I don't even know if this is obviously I do feel like it's important for you to kind of dive in and discover some of your own correspondences for some things to, to play around with making oils and making incenses because it's really not that hard once you give it a try um, but for those of you who really do feel intimidated by the process of getting into that stuff this book can make it a lot more user-friendly to just begin and it can make the process of um, you know dipping your toe in the water a little bit easier and I think if you're working with a goddess like the Morrigan sometimes you need something that makes it a little bit easier for you to dip your toe in she can be an intimidating goddess to work with at times personal experience speaking here um, sometimes she's an absolute dream and just like loving and delightful goddess energy to work with and other times I feel like I'm being dragged in front of the principal you know like I know I'm going to be browbeat I know I'm in for a tongue lashing I know I'm in for a why didn't you just listen to me the first time kind of moment um so it is nice to have some things that are a little bit easier when you are in that kind of intimidated or just learning mode. So hands down, no matter whether you're beginner or intermediate, that book gets a five out of five from me. I hope that you guys have enjoyed today's video. I hope you have found my thoughts on these books helpful. And um, 
Just for those of you who are stumbling across my channel for the first time, my name is Jess. I'm from Stellar Tarot. I do professional tarot and oracle card readings. I also make prayer beads and I have written a book for children called My Name is the Morrigan. And you can find more information about me in the doobly doos below. There are links to my Facebook, my Facebook group, my Instagram. Uh, you can buy me a coffee on Ko-Fi. So if you like what I do and you'd like to donate a little bit of money my way um, to keep me going, then you are welcome to do that if you don't feel like it's necessary to buy a book. Um, or, or a reading. And if you'd like to learn more about tarot kind of on your own, I also have two ebooks that are available uh, in my Etsy shop as well. So links to all of that good stuff are below. And until next time, I hope you guys take care, enjoy yourselves, and a very blessed be to all of you. Bye!